For this demonstration, we have a simple Stirling engine. The Stirling engine extracts work from pressure volume changes of a gas that occur because of temperature differentials. In this case, we're going to put the Stirling engine on top of something that has a different temperature than the air in the room. It can either be hotter or colder. Let's start with hotter. I'll place the Stirling engine on this heat pad. Notice that the flywheel on the top of the Stirling engine, when given a little kick, begins to turn. And, having been started, it continues to turn. Thus, the gas is doing work to turn the wheel. I'm not going to attempt to describe the action of the Stirling engine in full detail. You can find dozens of pictures and videos on the internet that go into great detail on all the different types and models of Stirling engines if you're interested. For our purposes, I just want to outline the broad principles. At the beginning of one turn of the flywheel, we have a somewhat loose, large piston inside the engine that's displacing the gas in the engine near the bottom. As the heat expands the gas that is there, it pushes both the primary and a small secondary piston up, with the latter rotating the flywheel. The flywheel is attached not only to the secondary piston, but also to the primary, with a variance in position. And during the power cycle, the flywheel's momentum forces the main piston down, driving the remaining hot gas up to the cooler part of the chamber above. In that chamber, it contracts because of the lower temperature, making it easier to move the secondary piston down and pull the main piston up, now driving the cold gas back into the hot side of the chamber so that the whole cycle starts again. To get the most efficiency out of the engine, it's important to properly coordinate the motion of the two pistons and the gap between the main piston and the container walls. But such design considerations go beyond what I want to illustrate here. The key point for our purposes is to illustrate the fashion in which PV changes deriving from temperature changes can be exploited to do work. Finally, let's switch our Stirling engine so that now the bottom rests on ice, which is colder than the room air, instead of the hot pad, which was warmer than the room air. Note that the same principle of temperature variation permits us to extract work, but now the pistons must move in a relationship opposite to that that was operative previously. So our flywheel is turning in the other direction. Stirling engines do find use in various low power applications, in part because they are extremely quiet and, obviously, they're wonderfully simple, so long as a useful temperature variation is available to exploit.